everybody. Welcome to another edition of HCS Matters. I'm John Wright, Director of Public Relations at Hardin County Schools, hanging out with John Stith, our Chief Operations Officer. And as you can tell, we're not in a classroom. Uh, we are in a school building, though. We're at Central Hardin High School. Uh, back in the fall, or the uh, early part of the school year, uh, we uh, walked around this building and uh, kind of saw what was going on with construction. A lot has taken place since then, John, and so it's probably time for another update. So. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, always happy to share with the community yeah. what we got going on. And as you can tell, we're not quite where we'd hoped we'd be, you know, yeah. when we talked last time. But as you can see, we go around today, there's about 100 guys on site and still trying to push to get this project across the finish so line. So tell us what we've done um, so far with phase, I guess phase one. So tell us what we've done, what we've yeah, got complete sure. so far. I'm trying to think about, uh, you know, what we talked about last time. Uh, I think we were out in the parking lot and we hadn't really turned yeah. the corner yet. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. most people that have been to Central lately notice we've turned the corner and we've gone all the way down the front of the building and we've kind of connected yep. uh, in with the other 90s part of the building. So pretty much the shape of phase one is, uh, has come up out of ground. Uh, all the walls for the most part are up and we're trying to get dried in. And that's really our next big milestone. We're hoping by the end of March to have all of phase one, all that new square footage that was built uh, completely dried in. Wow, that's a, that is a big, that'll be a big thing. So, because once, kind of like you wrote in the house, once you kind of get the, get the rainwater out, it can maybe move a little faster when you get inside, yeah, maybe. Most, most contractors say uh, that, you know, once you get dried in, you're really supposed to control your own destiny. Right. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, construction, it doesn't feel like you ever control your own destiny, but That's right. it really takes a lot of the weather element out. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of getting guys on site and getting things done at, right. at that point. So first part of phase one was a new, completely new auxiliary gym renovation of uh, the big gymnasium. Of course, if you come to a basketball game or a volleyball game, you saw that. It looks great. It looks great in that gym. So everybody's satisfied with that, I assume. Well, you know, and I, I'm not trying to, you know, toot my own horn, but uh, it's it's amazing once you finally get part of the building done, the compliments you start to get. Mm -hmm. So it's been nice. Several people, you know, I have some children in the system mm -hmm. and they've played in the gymnasium and you have to be in there and they'll say, man, then, you know, the gym looks great. It yeah. really looks good. Yeah. It, it's amazing what, uh, you know, uh, some new bleachers, new paint yep. and things like that really yeah. uh, can freshen up a place. Yeah. If you've come in the new uh, entryway there, mm -hmm. you know, that is a really nice shining mm -hmm spot for our district uh, right. the new entryway into the big gym and what will will be the uh, kind of westernmost entrance into campus is right. is really nice so we're going to and also uh fans will see a new football field before the years or uh yeah when uh, the, the board football at, season starts. you know the board has approved you know we started this process uh, almost over a year ago mm -hmm. upgrading our uh uh, athletic field, a lot of people call it the football mm -hmm, field, mm -hmm. so soccer, band, football, yep. all you know, yep. can use. Our minor sports can come and use it when uh, during during their off season. But we got North and John done. Those fields yep. look tremendous. Absolutely. And we hope to start on Central's field uh, as soon as school gets uh, ended uh, this school year. This school year. So tell, tell us tell us where we are right now, John, in the or what this where where we're standing, what this is going to be when it's complete. Yeah, um, if you're at Central and you're sitting on 62 looking at, uh, at Central, you'll see this big new area in the front of the building, mm -hmm. and that is the new media center. And uh, so what you see are happening right now are they're framing up the walls. Uh, there'll be some, they won't be classrooms, but there'll be areas that a lot of people would think of kind of function like mm -hmm. a classroom. Mm -hmm. There'll be uh, computer stations. There'll be some smaller rooms where kids can get together and collaborate, design, and and uh, brainstorm uh, concepts in small groups. And then it's going to have you know around the walls your traditional uh, shelving uh, for books. But this is going to be a centerpiece here in the front of the building. This new uh, media center, you and I might call it a library. Yep. Some big windows, so it's going to have lots of light. There's part of the building that's two-storied, so it, it's really going to feel, when you walk in here, it's going to feel almost like a gym. It's, it, it's really going to be big, nice, and uh, looking forward to getting this 
uh, closed in and some of the finished work on the inside. And that'll started. be a big change because the media center now has no outside windows. So that'll be a big yeah, change for those guys. It, you know, it's an interior room and yeah. it's very dated. Yeah. It, you know, I'm yeah. sure it goes back to the yeah. 90s. Yeah. Actually, excuse me, it goes back probably, probably to the, the 70s. Six, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, when if you've been in the old Central Hard Media Center, you come yeah. into this one, you're, you're definitely going to notice the change. So when we design these things or when you, when you guys look at these things, I mean, Mr. Isaacs has obviously some input, Library Media Center special have some input because it is still needs to be curriculum driven right I mean well absolutely um, you know when we were designing the project we brought in all of the uh, school experts we brought in the media mm -hmm. specialists we brought in teachers when we were talking about their classrooms mm -hmm. along with our design professionals mm -hmm. from JRA because yeah. You know, a lot of most buildings have some similarities, mm -hmm. but then how you use that building a lot of times is different from building to building. Yes. So we really try to look at it from that 360 degree view and, and incorporate all of what Central like to do plus mm -hmm. uh, some new things. Right. So it, right. uh, it, a lot of thought went into right. each one of the rooms really. Throughout and and the really when we're designing the new West, which will hopefully break ground on this summer, uh, it's going to kind of look like East. but may not be totally similar because West may use a different, right? Absolutely. And, you know, every time we do a new project, we like to stop, incorporate the things from the previous project that we really yeah. like. We want to yeah. repeat those things. And there's always a few things you want to tweak. So, yeah, there'll be some things that, you know, a little bit different at West than we did at East. And uh, that should be another nice project yeah, as well. Yeah, look forward, look forward to doing that. So let's kind of walk around uh, the facility uh, and, and see what's going to be in store for the students here at Central Harden High School. Okay, now we are standing now, uh, John, in the new cafeteria. So. T totally different than what the students are used to now. Yeah, um, again, well, I think we talked about it last time. One of the uh, downsides of the old school was the cafeteria was really for a middle school, so yeah. they had to use the auxiliary gym yeah. uh, during the day as, as uh, the cafeteria. That won't be the case anymore. Mm -hmm. So we have a new kitchen right here. Uh, the new cafeteria is going to have a, a much different feel than some of our other uh, kitchens. If you've been in North Harden's kitchen, yes. it'll it'll be similar to what you yes. see at North okay. uh, than what you've seen here at Central historically. Lots of different offerings, super nice. And it opens up into our new cafeteria. The cafeteria area kind of is an L. Yes. Uh, you can't really tell it yet. They've just started on the social stair. If you've been to some college campuses, yes. a feature that you've seen a lot of buildings now is an area where students can kind of just relax plug yep. in their device, yep. hang out uh, in, in a little bit different uh, style than yep. you might historically see in mm -hmm. a school cafeteria. Mm -hmm. We'll still have uh, tables and benches, mm -hmm. but we'll have that area too. It'll be a nice feature. And then the uh, long leg of the L will be your more traditional cafeteria space with benches and tables, but it'll also have goggles in it like we've done in a lot of our uh, cafeterias. recent cafeterias. Yes. Yes. So it'll be another space for uh, athletic programs, cheerleading, okay. uh, band, places that need a place after hours, a uh, big space to uh, do their thing. So you'll be able to from this point, access up there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It'll just be a long social stair, just okay. a little bit bigger staircase. Okay. You know, you might okay. want to think about like okay. that. That'll lead up to the uh, second floor. And okay. you know, once you get up there, obviously you can go east, west, uh, either parts of the building. Okay. Now, will there be dining up there, or dining, or any opportunity to dine up there, or will that just be access out of the yeah, out of the I, facility? I suspect if I was the principal, I won't put many tables up there. <laughs> Uh, you could do that. Uh, I know we do that a little bit at Cecilia Valley. Right. There might be some special seating up there, but I'd say they'll keep the majority of the kids either on the awesome. social stair or uh, in sure. the cafeteria. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So again, just that, um, and I've, I've uh, we, you and I have joked about your use of this word, but it's true, more collegial feel than, than what we're used to now. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think most uh, schools, most every organization aspires to try to emulate the next yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had an opportunity to do that here and just wanted to, you know, feel it out, see how we like it. And then if, you know, if it goes over real big, we'll probably try to replicate it in some of right. our other projects. Right, right, right. So again, just another uh, new portion that will certainly, uh, students can look forward to. And let's continue on our tour.
Okay, so we talked about dried in and uh, in the cafeteria and the new and the new media center. We're in an area now, John. We've come out of the cafeteria and we've walked down a hallway, and this is what dried in looks like. Yeah, you can definitely get a different sense when you're in this part of the building. Uh, they, they've started started doing a lot of the painting. Uh, they haven't put in all the drop ceiling yet because. We still need to have some, some inspections take place, but all of the HVAC, all of the wiring, all of the electrical, that's all been done in this part of the building. Uh, and so here pretty soon, once all those inspections are done, they'll go ahead and start dropping the rest of the ceiling tile in. And essentially, short of doing a final punch, this part of the building, uh, it's mostly done. They are gonna have to come in and do uh, we're going to have a non-waxable tile in, okay. in the hallways of this part of the building, but short of that, uh, we're getting this area pretty close to being ready for students. So non-waxable tile, that means no waxing, right? No waxing. So, you know, the last several projects we've done, we've really tried hard to get away from waxing. Not that there's anything wrong with it. We still do it in a lot of our buildings. It's just very labor intensive. Yeah. It's expensive over time because you always have to strip that wax off in the summer put new wax down and uh, just trying to be more cost efficient mm -hmm. and have our custodians have time to do other things around the building right. like work on the grounds or spend more time in the restrooms. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons why we've tried to get away from uh, waxing. Mr. Terry, you'll shake your hand over that, I, I promise <laughs> you. So where, where are we now, John? Where, what? Um, we would be kind of in the knuckle part of okay. the building. If you're looking at 60, I'm looking at Central from 62, we're on the end closest kind of near Taco Bell mm -hmm. we're um, I'm gonna call this the second floor most people would consider it the main floor yep. uh, this end of the building actually has three stories of classrooms okay. family consumer science is below us uh, above us are just standard classrooms and we're in an area with just some standard classrooms for social studies math English uh, uh, things uh, of those uh, those uh, Curriculum, curriculum, right, 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 yes. right, right, right. So, I, I guess we probably should have asked this question out before. So, we have classrooms, uh, we have areas where those areas are taught, but those areas were built in 1970, and so was I. I was I was made in 1970. So, and I'm 50 years old. When you have 50 of, when you have 2,000 of your friends over every day for 50 years, you, it's time. It oh, sure. Matter. And, you know, we are keeping a lot of those rooms. The, in phase two, uh, the, that portion of the building is going to get renovated, but the classrooms that we're losing from the 70s, the old middle school, mm -hmm. had to get replicated somewhere else, and yep. this is where the some someplace else is, right, absolutely. Right, right. And those buildings, the, I'm sure they were touched in the 90s, but golly, that's been 30 plus years ago. Yeah, I mean, you could kind of tell from, from what went on there that they spent some effort, um, you know, putting on the new big gym and the, the new freshman wing, but a lot of those rooms really hadn't had, I think those are the original doors, yeah. the original windows, yeah. all the way back to the 70s, so some of that stuff's probably at right. least 50 years old. Right, right, right. So, uh, again, just another, another part of the building, and we're going to go downstairs, look at some classrooms, then we're also going to show you the intricacies of the HVAC system, which, I, you know, it's not just the HVAC system, it's pretty cool, so you'll see that in just a second. So um, this is probably the quietest area that you'll see today, but it's also one of the most important, even though it's no classroom space, this keeps us, uh, this keeps us warm, this keeps us cool, and it also probably provides some heat for our water, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think the last time, of course we couldn't, this wasn't really here the last right, time we were together. Right, right. We did look at that high dollar area I think we talked yes, about yes. that contained the circulating pumps for the geo loop. Yes. Well, this is kind of the other end of that uh, system. Uh, all our water source heat pumps. Uh, our last several builds, we have a mezzanine. We've, we've tried to keep a lot of that high dollar equipment out of the weather. Sometimes yeah. folks set those units on the roof and there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, 
we find that our uh, filters get changed more regularly, our equipment lasts yeah. longer. So uh, there's a lot of reasons that you'd, you'd want to have a mezzanine like this. But uh, yeah, as we talked about last time, very energy efficient system, yeah. uh, a geo system. I think if you'll talk to just about any engineer will tell you is the most cost effective way to heat and cool a building, especially of this size. So uh, excited to have all this in, you know, if, if teachers aren't, uh, at a nice right. temperature, if kids right. aren't at a good temperature, nobody's happy. Going, that, so it uh, just really makes well. the makes the day go really well. well when you said geo, John, uh, I remember uh, geo wells uh, that were that are under the soccer field. They're also under a, a parking lot uh, up here. So does that have any relation to this? Absolutely. Yeah. That's what those uh, when we were in that mechanical room. Those yeah. circulating pumps are circulating fluid okay. through all those geo wells to either take away energy or, you know, add energy. Right. Right. Uh, and all that's been done, you know, mm -hmm. all the geo drilling's mm -hmm. over with. So it's just now of hooking all the units up together mm -hmm. and turning them on. So, so, so uh, kind of um, getting away from here a little bit, we've done lots of studies and saved uh, the district and the taxpayers a lot of money because of um, because of, on our energy because of the work that Kyle Lucas and, and our buildings and grounds team has done. They, talk they about do, that. They do a fantastic job. You know, Kyle has an HVAC background mm -hmm. and uh, he understands that equipment better than anybody <laughs> I know. And right. uh, I, I would try to talk in his world, but I, I just mm -hmm. simply can't because mm -hmm. he has such a wealth of knowledge. And mm -hmm. he's always looking for ways to uh, cycle pumps on and off, uh, you know, deactivate parts of the building at certain times of the day and at night to keep not only our energy use down, but our demand, which mm -hmm. uh, if you're in that world, you'll know that it's not just about how much energy you use, it's those peak times of the day yep. that really can cause you to spend a lot of money. And Kyle does a great job of keeping our building profile very low and, and keeping renegotiating our, our rates with our electrical companies, mm -hmm. uh, our power companies. and. It just does a fantastic job. 30 years ago, just because the heat was on on a Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock, it might have been on a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, but that's not the case anymore. We no. work hard to, to avoid that. Yeah, all of our systems now have lots of sensors. They have monitors. Kyle does a great job, not only during the week, but on the weekends, making mm -hmm. sure that we're only using energy when we really need to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the added bonus of the Inflation Reduction Act, so a lot of this project the project that we did at Woodland, we'll get about a third of our um, geo package returned back to the board awesome. through that program as well. Right. So not only are we saving money by putting it in, we'll save money over the next 50 years actually using it. Right, so doing our best to save to save our taxpayers, our constituents money. We'll continue on our tour here in just a second. All right, so now we are in a, a, a classroom that is really just about finished. Uh, it, it looks like, John, is that a fair statement? Yeah, uh, you know, we still have a little glass that has to go in this room, and we talked about the drop ceilings, but mm -hmm. this is what uh, the flooring in the classrooms will look like here at Central, especially in the, the new uh, part of Central. But it's what we've used at East. Uh, we've used it at Lincoln Trail. It's polished yep. concrete. Yep. Uh, we like it real well in classrooms. Classrooms a lot of times get covered up with furniture anyway, mm -hmm. but it's a non-waxable surface. You can't really hurt it. And uh, it seemed it's seemed to work out real well for us so far at right. a lot of our We've done it several parts. Cecilia Valley is probably the first one we did it at, and uh, it, it, it went okay there. You know, yeah, I think there uh, were a little hiccups, but it went okay. Cecilia Valley has it. EC3 yeah. has it yeah, as well. EC3, Put yeah. a little stain in theirs, but this is just concrete that's been polished uh, yeah. with, with, with no stain. Yeah. Ground down and kind of has a nice sheen to it and uh, easy to clean, easy to maintain. I was going to say, the custodial staff and probably the teachers will appreciate this as well. It'd be just easy to clean up in case they spill anything or, or whatever. Now, I noticed you, you talked about glass. Uh, so um, uh, I, I like that. I, I think I would like that as a, as a teacher because not only are, is there glass there, but it's also uh, adjacent to a hallway, which will bring in the natural light as well. Oh, absolutely. You can always put blinds up if it becomes a problem as far as students right. getting distracted. But anymore, KDE, uh, Kentucky Department of Education really likes you to bring in natural light into mm -hmm. rooms as much as you can. And this was just an opportunity, you know, close to an exterior wall that had a lot of light. Mm -hmm. So I think we're in the ROTC room, which okay. has some additional uh, closets and things to uh, house their gear. But uh, going to be real nice space for, for that program as well. These boxes on the walls, we'll see these in classrooms. Obviously, this is for technology, but, you know, we really do need, we, that's something I'm sure you consider or you guys work on is technology is a big part of it, right? Oh, absolutely. 
absolutely. This is a pretty important box anymore. You know, back in the day when we were in school, you might have had a chalkboard, maybe a marker board, and that was your <laughs> that technology. Was it. Yeah, and a map. <laughs> uh, but here, you know, we have uh, not only the teacher's desk that has a lot of tech that goes to it, the teacher workstation has, you know, attendance programs mm -hmm. and uh, student uh, record information mm -hmm. programs, but this box also houses. I think we've talked about it before, but you can kind of see on the wall where we're, we'll hang some additional interactive panels. And I always tell people it's kind of like a giant iPad yeah. on the wall, but yeah. it's not just a TV monitor, it's interactive. Kids can get up and uh, do different simulations with it, uh, manipulate data. Uh, so all that has to, to feed into a central location and um, get piped back around the room where it needs to go to. So these little white boxes, Lape Tab, and his team do a great job. Uh, they always keep us up to date with the you know latest, greatest, uh, tried and true uh, yes. technology information. We don't try to jump on every bandwagon, but the stuff that works really well, that's what uh, that's what his team does and, and goes after. The, and they do a fantastic job with so that. So th this this will be done, and this is what we call phase one. Uh, this is uh, when we get this com this where we are and what we're doing now complete. That'll be phase one. Then we'll start on phase two, which will, uh, which we've already told our eighth grade parents, hey, your freshman year is not gonna be on this campus, but you've been in some of those meetings I have too. Mr. Isaacs and his team, man, they are dedicated to make sure those students get the same experience that they would here. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I've, I think I mentioned before, I have an incoming freshman next yeah. year, and so I set in on the freshman orientation uh, yeah. with my son. And yet his team did a great job of explaining how everything's going to go. Uh, I think a lot of the students are going to come here first in the morning, get breakfast, be bussed over to the New Lincoln Trail, uh, spend, you know, probably most of their day there. I think some kids may go back and forth, some teachers may go back and forth, but all those kids are going to wind right back up here in the you afternoon. The day, so, yeah. you know, if you're worried about, uh, am I going to get to participate in wrestling? Am I going to get to do mm -hmm. uh, football or whatever your uh, cheerleading, volleyball, whatever mm -hmm. your sport is? won't be an issue because you're going right. to be right back here to get get back with with your program so i think parents may actually enjoy i know my freshman year i remember is pretty tough and you know when you're a freshman and you're mingling with seniors mm -hmm. you know that could be a little uncomfortable sometimes mm -hmm. so they're going to have their own space uh, you know the more i think about it and talk to folks I, some people are pretty excited that their yeah. freshmen are aren't going to be just thrown in with everybody else uh, right. right out of the gate. And that's the old Lincoln Trail Elementary up on Bargetown Road. And your your team, our Buildings and Grounds team, rather, is working extremely hard to get that building ready. Oh, sure. You know, we, we've been using it um, since we vacated the building, yeah. not as a school, but we've had different programs that yeah. have been in there. Some have been renting space. Yeah. So it never really got completely you know, right. unused. Right. Uh, but yeah, we're working on upgrading some of the uh, HVAC equipment in there. I know we just talked about Leif, his team's going in and putting, you know, nice interactive panels mm -hmm. uh, in the building. And uh, it's going to be a nice space when we get, mm -hmm. when the kids come back in, in August. Right. So, so thank you for hanging out with us. We wanted, just wanted uh, you, our viewers, to see uh, how your money is being spent and just upgrading our facilities and making them the best facilities uh, that they can be because our students deserve it, our community deserves it. And so uh, we just wanted you to, to see uh, the, uh, the remodeled or the remodeling that's going on here at Central Hardin High School. If you have any questions, feel free to look on our website or give us a call at Central Office uh, at 270-769-8800. We'll be glad to answer those questions for you as well. So have a great rest of your day.